One of the survivors from the Florida massacre is crediting the love she felt from everyone around her for her recovery. 17-year-old Maddie Wilford spoke to reporters for the first time today. I was sitting on my couch today just thinking about all the letters and gifts that everyone has given and just like all the love that's been passed around. I definitely wouldn't be here without it and I just want to send my appreciation and love out to all of you. Rescuers initially thought Wilford was dead. She suffered bullet wounds to her chest, abdomen, and arm. She's undergone three surgeries since the shooting. As John Roberts just mentioned, the man who became the face of the law enforcement response to the massacre is now himself facing intense scrutiny. Correspondent Phil Keating has the story of the Broward County Sheriff tonight from Parkland. Good evening, Phil. Good evening, Brett. Sheriff Scott Israel, the man who walked up to the cameras on evening number one, declaring the horror for everyone that 17 lives had been taken at this school. Well, two times he has been elected as the Democratic candidate for sheriff, most recently reelected in 2016 with 72% of the vote. He calls these demands for his ouster purely political at a time when the tears still have not yet stopped. I could only take responsibility for what I knew about. I've given amazing leadership. Broward County, Florida Sheriff Scott Israel suddenly on the defensive for the job he's doing as sheriff of Florida's second most populous county. More than 70 state lawmakers, all Republican, have called on Republican Governor Rick Scott to suspend Israel, who was elected as a Democrat for incompetence and neglect of duty less than two weeks since 19-year-old former student Nicholas Cruz confessed to killing 17 people inside Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Sheriff Israel acknowledged his deputies were called out nearly two dozen times to deal with a volatile and gun-obsessed Cruz, but never took it further. The governor has now ordered the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to investigate. The local sheriff's department, they've got to be completely transparent. We have to do a thorough investigation, and whoever didn't do their job has to be held accountable. The National Rifle Association spokesperson faults the man at the top for not using his authority to arrest Cruz, adding, and I wish that as much attention were given to the Broward County Sheriff and their abdication of duty as trying to blame five million innocent um, um, law-abiding gun owners all across the country. Just Thursday, the sheriff shocked the community further when he said his armed deputy assigned to guard the high school failed to enter the freshman building as the bullets were flying. At this point, one deputy was remiss, dereliction of duty and he's now no longer with this agency. That resource officer's attorney pushed back today, saying Scott Peterson was not a coward and evidence will exonerate his actions. Amid reports that upon arriving on scene, three other deputies also took up positions behind cars. Instead of rushing into the school, the sheriff says he is looking into that. But Sunday, Sheriff Israel said he will absolutely not resign. You don't uh, measure uh, a person's leadership by a deputy not going in. And more on that resource officer via his attorney. He says the reason he did not storm Building 12 on the day of the shooting was that at that moment, he thought the gunshots were coming from outside the building. Tomorrow's another day of planning here in the classrooms for the teachers. Then Wednesday, the more than 3,000 students return to their classrooms where they'll have to in the morning walk past all of the memorials, the media, and that freshman building still boarded up in a crime scene. Brett. That's tough. Phil Keating live in Parkland. Phil, thanks.